Hey guys, welcome back to Alcos Explain. My name is David Kim, and today we're gonna go over another lead code question. Easy. Um, I believe I so I watched my last video, and towards the end of it, the my computer was starting to get heated up, and so it was a little bit harder to hear. But um, hopefully, it didn't bother anybody. I don't. Ha I'm not using a separate mic right now, so I'm just using the computer mic, which is right. I mean, it's at the base of my laptop. Therefore, when the laptop laptop starts, um, th when the fan starts going, it'll it'll over overlap my voice. But, anyways, um, if you watch till the end of the video and you hear some white noise, that's what's going on. Let's get to it. This is called uh, this problem is Excel sheet column title. Given a positive integer, return its corresponding column title as uh, column title as appear in Excel sheet as it as it appears in an in an Excel sheet. There's something wrong with that grammar, I think. Anyways, for example, one we're gonna so they're gonna input give us an input of one, and then we're gonna get an output of a. Uh, likewise, two b three c, twenty six is z. Z is the last letter of the alphabet, and once we get to twenty seven, we want double a. And um, so when you think about this question, the initial thing is, okay, we're working with numbers and we're having it map to letters. And so we know that, okay, we're going to, well, we know that. And I think my fan is already starting to go. So um, hopefully you still hear my voice loud and clear. Um, what is it? We know that we're working with a, a infinite amount of numbers or maybe not infinite, uh, although they don't give us the limit on here potentially infinite amount of numbers with a limited set of letters and so we know that okay we're gonna have something like a key here and whenever the first thought that I thought when I looked at this question was actually not to use modulo um, it wasn't to use modulo it was to use uh, character codes um, but I ended up solving the problem using modulo if we look at my notes down here the first thing that I wrote is let's use uh, this character code at zero and I found out that if we did a capital letter and uh, we do character code at, we get that number. But at the same time, I think that's kind of backwards in what we're trying to do because we're actually given the input, so that obviously didn't work out. Um, another way I approached it once I, in order to understand kind of exactly what was happening was um, I kind of wrote down a few examples for myself, A and Z, that's given. AA, we are also given that here, 227A. But once we got to um, these uh, examples down here, I started guessing them myself. Um, like, uh, we could always, like, even before you write anything in these tests, in this code, you could always enter a sample um, input into your test case and kind of guess what the output's going to be. And if you can guess that confidently, then you know, okay, you understand the question. It's another way to check yourself. And so I think, <clears throat> so this one was the first one where I gave myself a rather big number and um, computed this in my head versus computing it with the code that, that I'm going to potentially write. And so that kind of makes you think, okay, if I can do that in my head, then I could definitely make the code do it for me too. And this, I believe this is when I decided, okay, we're going to start using modulo instead of any kind of character codes. Actually, I do believe somebody used character codes in the solutions, but we're not going to do that. We're going to um, we're going to go with the numbers and using modulo. You could also have turned this into a string, this key, um, but I decided to put it into an array for some reason. I don't know why. I think I like to um, waste time <laughs> and whatnot, but anyways, this is the key, and the way it's going to do it is we're going to use the modulo to kind of say okay the input modulo 26 because there's 26 letters in the alphabet and if we get um, say we get the number one as our input then one modulo 26 is going to be one and therefore we can incorporate we could uh, kind of connect it with the first the one index in this array which is why I have Z over here likewise if we we're given the input of 26 then 26 modulo 26 is going to be 0. Therefore, we can directly correlate it to the 0th index in our key. Um, that's why I manipulated my key this way. You could also have just made it into a big string and just stuck zero, Z at the front of it. 
that would have worked too because you can index into a string. Um, the structure of this here, I have a string that's going to be my uh, potential output or my ultimate output. The key that's going to help me um, map to all these letters as I do the modulo, um, uh, mo if I, while, while I do the modulos, and uh, I guess I wrote a comment here, no restrictions on outputs or on inputs, and that would mean that they did not guarantee us that we we're not going to get bad inputs. And so in an interview situation, I know I didn't really address, I wrote a comment, but I didn't address it. In an interview situation, you do want to at least um, write some kind of uh, what is it, input check or something like that. Because they didn't say, okay, we're not going to throw you random letters in there, or we're not going to throw you negative numbers. I do uh, just the tiniest bit of check here. If n is less than or equal to zero, we're obviously not going to um, return anything. We're going to return the string, which was only empty for now. Um, but I failed to check for any other inputs that's not a number. I mean, you, I could have done that easily by just saying if uh, this type of, of this input is not a number, then return like an error code or something like that. That's kind of what you would want to do in an interview situation. For lead code, obviously, it's not going to be that important because their test cases that they input here, they usually don't <clears throat> try to throw weird inputs at us. Okay, so uh, the idea of this is going to be um, right over here on line 41. I wrote use modulo to get the last number and keep doing that, create the string backwards. And so the reason why we're going to create the string backwards is because um, once you modulo, say say we had a number like 20, <clears throat> let's say 27, and it looks like 27 maps to AA. 27 mod 26, that's going to be our first thing, and that's going to be giving us, well, other than the fact that 27, because it's after Z, is going to be AA, we've got to find, I guess we've got to find a way it does that with our code. 27 modulo 26, that gives us the value of 1, and so we make that our place. And by place, I mean what is, what place uh, from the key do we want to grab? And so we go to the key, the place, and then we have, we grabbed one because if for our input of 27, 27 mod 26 is one. Therefore, first of all, we're going to grab the A and then we're going to add it to the front of the string. That's how we're building it backwards. And right over here on line 17, this code might look a little funny if you're not used to ternary. So let's break it down real quick. Um, what we're essentially doing is we're reinitializing n to be something else. This while loop is never going to end if n never kind of goes lower than 0. So what we want to do is we want to constantly uh, chip away at it. And so we say, OK, um, n equals. So if even if you don't know ternary, that this should be clear. You're just uh, n equals something n equals this statement, or this whole statement, right over here. And so whatever is the output of this statement. And so now we get into a ternary. The first part of it is we have a, like a conditional, like a if statement. Place equals zero. Does it equal zero or not? And if it does, then we do the first half of this colon. If it does not, we do the second half of this colon. In our case, it does not, because place just equals one. Um, n was 27, uh, 27 mod 26, 1, and so place does not equal 0, therefore we go to this back end of the ternary, and now this is the output of the ternary, which is going to be what the n is assigned to, and that is going to be um, 1 divided by 26, 1 over 26, and, um, wait, is that what it goes to? No, sorry. It's not 1 over 26, it's 27 over 26, because n was 27, and that's what it is, okay. And so at that point, now n is equal to 27 over 26, and I believe that is a 1, because 26 goes into 27 only once. It has some decimals, but we did a math stuff for just to kind of not deal with all of that, uh, all of the decimals, because we don't need to. And now n is equal to 1. n is still greater than 0. And so we go down here, 1 modulo 26. That is going to be um, 1. And so now the key of place, we're going to grab 
the first index of the one index, the first index of whatever is our key is, and that's going to be another A. And we're going to add it to the beginning of the string, and then we go down here, we're going to reassign N to this ternary is place zero, no it's not, it's one again, and so at this point we go to the back end of this, and N, which is one divided by 26, that's going to be a, a zero point something, and so um, that's not, and once we floor it, that's a zero, and so uh, this while statement no longer val is valid, and so we go ahead and return the string. The reason why we had to make this look all weird and do a ternary here, pretty much the reason why we had to add in this minus one is because if we were to test uh, easy input such as 26, 26 we know that's going to be a z, that's one of the easiest cases that they gave us. And so let's go ahead and do that real quickly. 26 over 0, yes we're going to go into the while loop. So 26 mod 26, that is going to be a 0. So far so good, we know that we want to uh, make our string and we want to put in the z there. Okay, because 26 mod 26, 0 again, 0 is place of the key, it's going to be our z, we added that right there. And so now we're going to have to reassign the n, and is the place a 0? Yes it is. And let's pretend we didn't have it, let's pretend we didn't have this ternary and defaulted to just simply letting the n re re uh, get redefined with math.floor of n over 26. In this case, if we did not acknowledge this portion of it, we would have done this, which is 26 over 26, and that equals 1. Now, our input was 26, that's a single letter, but because um, if we didn't do this side of the equation, which actually minuses the 1, uh, we would have ended up with n re reassigning itself as a 1 and going through this while loop one more time. And that would have stuck an a in front of it, and it would have been az instead of zz with the input of 26. And so this whole thing right here, this 26, uh, this math off 4 of that minus 1, it really is only to uh, handle the z cases, uh, but it's very necessary because without it, you know, the code doesn't work. Um, I would say this question was an easy one, but the the important thing about this is that you really want to test, especially with modulo, you want to test the front and the end portions of kind of your keys. The mistake that I made while making this uh, algorithm was that I had the solution all ready to go and it worked for every single number except for when a Z was involved because I actually didn't have this portion of the code in here. Um, and you know what, that could have been solved really easily. Uh, I mean, I, I first uh, understood that, okay, the Z's are messing me up when I started testing out 702's and the, these high numbers, but you know what, if I kind of um, looked at the A case, make sure that when the input is 1, it worked. If I made sure that the input worked when the input was 26, then, you know, if I came to the point where I was testing 702, I wouldn't have failed. And, you know, that's not that important that you do fail or that you get it right every single time because sometimes, you know, interviewers are looking for, they're inevitably, inevitably going to know some people are going to go through hiccups and they want to see how you recover from that. At the same time, um, it's an avoidable situation and there's nothing wrong with just acing the whole dang thing on the first try of it. Um, and so, okay, that was, that was this. Let's go ahead and I'll, let me take you to some of these submissions. Um, these ones that I ran kind of go at 46 and 60. These are also the runs of my algorithms. These middle cases are ones that I took from uh, other solutions that apparently had better times than me, but uh, in this, I guess in this day and age, maybe they put in more test cases or something. And it doesn't seem to be doing that much better. And what I mean by other solutions is once you go to the submissions, or once you submit, I think you're automatically routed to this tab. If you click on details, you're going to be routed to a page with all of the answers. And you can go ahead and take a look at how you compare. And so mine, mine is right there, 24%. Um, but uh, you can also look at these other people's solutions like this guy. I think this is the guy who used character code. But uh, 
Yeah, even if, even this one where it says most people use this algorithm. See how they use the string. Uh, I tried it, and don't feel bad that your algorithm is less efficient, or less efficient in terms of this runtime because sometimes it's not. Sometimes they ran it at an earlier day and age, and so who knows. What is important is that you understand your time complexity of your question and that you're not doing unnecessary loops. That is the most important part. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hopefully um, it didn't go too long, but uh, I am working on getting a better mic. Hopefully that will I'll get one soon, but I'm also trying to be more consistent with these videos. I am going to be uploading more easy videos, uh, easy level videos, um, just because I am not near my whiteboard right now, and also just to get myself back in the groove and give me less excuses to not upload these videos, um, I'm just gonna make it easiest for myself, or yeah, easiest for myself to do it, hard for me to get excuses. And so, hopefully, you enjoyed this. Um, thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, um, if you do like these explanation videos, go ahead and subscribe. I'm gonna try to be more consistent. And you can always uh, link a leak code or code words or whatever algorithm question in the comments or email me at algosexplained at gmail.com and I will try to uh, address it. So um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, catch you in the next one. Bye.